Well, it's been two and a half months since the new Congress convened, but despite controlling both houses of Congress and the presidency, Republicans have not accomplished much. No major bills passed. The only one even introduced, the proposed Obamacare replacement, could be in trouble, especially now the Congressional Budget Office estimated it would take away health insurance from 24 million people. That's the headline tomorrow. Is it right? Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana joins us now. He's the Republican Majority Whip. Uh, Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. Great to be so, here, Tucker. 24 million people will be dropped from health coverage in the next 10 years, according to the CBO. That's the headline on the front page of every paper tomorrow. Is this the end of the... I mean, what does this mean? That sounds bad. Well, the problem is they got it wrong if you look at that headline. What CBO said is, if given the option, which in our bill, we actually give people freedom. You don't right. have to get on Obamacare. You can get off of Obamacare. And what CBO is estimating is, even with taxpayer subsidies, they think 14 million people just next year will get off of Obamacare if given the choice. Meaning right. they could still stay on it, but if they want to get off, they have the freedom to do it, and 14 million will. That's not lost coverage. That's not throwing anybody off. But CBO calls that lost coverage. Uh, to me, that means you just had the freedom to say, I don't want to be on Obamacare anymore, and I got to make that choice for my family. And now you have better options because there's going to be a competitive marketplace that we create where you can go buy whatever you want for your family at a lower cost. And CBO, most importantly, backs up the fact that when our plan is implemented, it will lower costs dramatically, double digits decrease in the cost of health care premiums for families. So when the CBO says there's going to be a massive decrease in the number of people covered, they mean by Obamacare, not covered by any insurance policy at all. That's correct, because what we're doing is getting rid of Obamacare and then letting families make the choice of what they want to do for their health care. They actually get to pick their own plan, which is the opposite of Obamacare. Obamacare said, no matter what you think and you want for your family, if you like what you have, you can keep it only if an unelected bureaucrat in Washington says this is right. a plan you can have. But we changed that. Well, what I don't, here's what I don't get. So there's, there's no um, mandate in this bill. Right. Right. So you don't have to buy health insurance. We zero out the want. individual mandate and the employer mandate right. penalty. So but that's you all free. But keep in the requirement that insurance companies cover people with pre-existing conditions. That's correct. Right. Because it's popular. I don't see how those are sustainable together. So that means I don't have to buy health insurance, which I think is great, shouldn't have to, but it also means the health care insurers cannot turn me down if I show up to buy a policy. So why would I bother to buy insurance? Why wouldn't I just show up as soon as I get my diagnosis? Well, you would need to have continuous coverage, first of all. But the other thing is there are going to be real options for you. If you look at Obamacare, one of the things it's done, it's led to monopolies in about a third of the marketplaces across the country. So even if you're out buying, trying to buy insurance in Obamacare, you literally only have one choice, which is called a monopoly, which right. is why costs are up. It's because all the mandates are so unworkable that companies just stop writing policies. Well, of course. So what we've seen is a lot of these insurance companies that left the marketplace said, look, under your plan, we will actually be able to come back in and write policies again for people that they want to buy. If you like what you have, you truly can go and buy it for your family. But, but what happens if you don't want to buy? Because it's expensive. I mean, under That's any your plan, choice. it's expensive. It's your choice. But it's your choice to buy whatever you want. Of course, but the insurance companies, it's... Are required to take me no matter even if they know I'm gonna, they're going to lose money on me they have to take me because congress is forcing them to so why are they going to be sustainable well it's not it's not as simple as gaming the system which you're seeing under obamacare where people literally can get out of the system for months and then if they get sick they can just jump right back right. in uh, that's not how it'll work you know you'll have to be in the system if you want to have a plan but ultimately you get to choose the plan that's the most important thing there are tax credits for people that are low income right. working people that can have the ability right now you get a tax break if you get your insurance from your employer about sixty one percent of the people in this country get their health care from their employer but what happens if your employer doesn't provide health care what happens if you're a small business owner we're for the first time actually giving the same tax break that employers get to families that right. can't get it through their employer. And so they can go on buy whatever they want for their family. And we bolster health savings accounts. One of the biggest success stories pre-Obamacare in health care was HSAs, health savings right. accounts, which actually lowered cost and gave people more options. Under Obamacare, they literally obliterated the HSA market. We're bringing that back so that families can actually go work through HSAs and, and get, again, get the ability to buy lower cost health care, what they want for their family, it's their choice, not a government bureaucrat in Washington. So we get a ton of email on this show, and one out of three is along these lines. Boy, I voted for Trump, I voted Republican, they control all the levers of power in D.C., and they haven't done anything. They've got no major bills through. The president has four empty seats in the cabinet room today. 
Why are Democrats so much better at obstructing than Republicans were eight years ago when Democrats controlled everything? Well, first of all, and, and this hasn't gotten a lot of attention, we've actually put a number of bills on President Trump's desk that he signed into law. Uh, one of the most high profile was the bill getting rid of the stream buffer rule. In one stroke of the pen, from a bill we put on President Trump's desk a few weeks ago, we saved over 70,000 jobs in the coal industry. In fact, President Trump had coal miners at the bill signing. Right. Uh, he didn't give a bill to a member of Congress who helped write the bill. Uh, he actually gave the bill to a coal miner. Bill Johnson from Ohio led this effort. This was a bill Congress passed, House and Senate. Got so you're satisfied desk, with the pace and achievement so far? Uh, we had a 27 and a half hour committee meeting. I was on the committee, Energy and Commerce, last week. We went, they said it's a record, longest committee meeting in Congress where we passed the bill to gut Obamacare, the repeal and replace bill. Uh, longest committee meeting. Democrats fought us every step of the way. Uh, and it was a very unified vote. Every Republican voted for our bill. This is the repeal and replace right. bill. Every Democrat voted against it because they know our bill guts Obamacare and actually replaces it with reforms that put patients back in charge. So it showed you when you really get down to the bottom of it, yeah. we've been working hard. The legislative process takes some time to do it, but we are getting a bill that's ready to go to the House floor in about a week, and then it's going to get to the president's desk ultimately, and President Trump wants to sign it because he's going to follow through right. on his promise. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Great to be Appreciate back with you, Tucker. Thank you.